Verse 3 says, for we walk in the flesh. There's no doubt about that. All of us have to battle the flesh every day. Amen? Amen. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through who? The Holy Spirit's the one who has to bite our, fight our battles for us by the power of the Holy Ghost. You have to realize you cannot win this battle on your own. You've got to have help from God. You've got to have help from the Holy Spirit. To the pulling down of strongholds, and I don't care who you are this morning, you've got some strongholds in your life. You've got some sin which does so easily beset you. You've got some struggle you're struggling with in your spiritual life. And your flesh is fighting against you. Casting down imaginations. That's where sin starts is in the brain. Say amen. Imaginations when your mind's wandering. When your mind's thinking about things of the world instead of things of God. We have got to keep our mindset on the things of God. We have to cast down wicked imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. The world wants to take your mind off of God. The word of God wants to put your mind on God because God's where the answer is. God's where the victory is. And we have to have that knowledge of God and we cannot let the world exalt itself. We cannot let the world overtake us. We have to take down those walls. Then it says, and bring him into captivity every thought. That's every minute of every hour of every day. To the obedience of Christ. You want to know what the victory is in life? Simple obedience. That's the victory. Obeying God. Not doing what you want. Not doing what others want. But simply surrendering to the principles of God. And obeying God. That's where victory is found. It says in verse 6, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience. In other words, you've got to have a mindset that you're going to remove all disobedience from your life. Everything that you do that breaks God's heart, he is going to remove it, or you're going to remove it by his power out of your life. A readiness. In other words, we've got to prepare ourselves to fight the battle. We've got to prepare ourselves to say no to disobedience. When your obedience is what? Fulfilled. You see, folks, that's a wonderful thing when obedience is fulfilled. When you obey God and you do what he's told, what you're told when you're told the way you're told. Listen, if you do everything God tells you to do, you've got nothing to be nervous about. You've got nothing to be worried about. But something to be thankful for. We have all kinds of walls that we need to pull down in our spiritual lives. The bricks and mortar in these walls is our flesh, and it's strong and it's hard. Your flesh wants you to do what you want to do. It's called self-will. It's called pride. It's called the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. The height on these walls is our wayward, wicked imaginations, our thinking. If we can get our thinking under control, we can get our bodies under control. A lot of folks have stinking thinking. Why? Because their thoughts are controlled by their heart and their flesh and not God. If you want to live a victorious Christian life, you better have every thought under the submission of the Holy Spirit of God. The bricks is the flesh, the height is our imagination, the width and the depth of these walls is our selfish pride. If I could tell you one thing I believe is destroying the Christian world today, it's selfish pride. It's pride. Pride is thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Putting yourself above God putting yourself above others. Folks, we've got to get pride out of our life. I've heard people say, all my life say, swallow your pride. No, spit it out. Spit out your pride. Pride will keep you from surrendering to God. Because we have in America this thought of the self-made man and self-made woman. We're nothing without God. We're nothing without the hand of the Lord 
and the help of the Lord. The first weapon that will pull all these walls down is acknowledging God. If you want to start taking those walls down today, hit this altar and acknowledge you need God. Acknowledge you need help. You need strength. You need grace. You need mercy. That's forgiveness. Amen? You need grace, God's strength. You need mercy. You need forgiveness. That first weapon is saying, hey, Lord, I need your help. It's called getting out of the way and letting God do it for you instead of trying to make a mess out of your own life. The second weapon that will pull these walls down is the knowledge. Not only acknowledging him, but that's the first step is acknowledging that he's God and accepting and surrendering him. The next step is his knowledge, knowing him. That's why we have church, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Tuesday morning, Thursday night, so you can know who God is. I'm afraid when we get to heaven at the judgment seat of Christ, a lot of people are going to stand there trembling because they're going to realize too late how little they knew about the God that loved them most and how little time they spent getting to know him. Getting to know him. You don't think about your children until they're 22, 23, 24 years old. Power was out on Thursday. I'm sorry, on Friday. And I didn't have no computer. I didn't have no lights. I was bored stiff. So I opened my desk drawer. That was a mistake. Because I realized how much junk I had shoved up in that drawer for all these years. And I started pulling out things I thought I throwed away years ago. And I come across a stack of pictures that were probably back 2000, 2001. We're still living in a trailer. And I looked at my two monkeys and I began to cry. I said, God, why did you ever let them grow into the monsters they grew into? Why could they stay like they were? But it don't work that way, does it? And you begin to think about the past. You begin to think about the present. Pictures do that to you. Amen. And when your son stands up in front of a congregation of a church with his glasses on backwards, you realize how little you know about your own children. Or maybe what you should have taught them. Say amen or oh me. <laughs> you have some regrets. Amen. You wish you'd have spent a little more time and teaching them and raising them. And, and you know, that's just natural. That's just natural. You wish you had done this. You wish you had done that. I'm trying to help you when you stand before God someday, and it may be soon, that you didn't waste your life on yourself, but you invested your life in God. I can look back on my life, and I can say a lot of bad things, and you can too, but shut up. This is Pastor Appreciation Day. Don't you dare say them. But I can look back on my life, and I can say one thing's for sure. I did not waste God's will for my life. I answered the call. I have preached for him for 30 years. I've seen souls saved and lives changed. I don't regret a single service I've ever been in, a service I've ever preached. I don't regret any of it. It's been an investment, an investment in me knowing who God is. How much of an investment have you made in knowing who God is? Is it just a little investment or is it a big investment? It's going to tell the judgment seat of Christ. You won't be able to hide behind anything then. It's going to be you and God, you and Jesus Christ, face to face. And the books are going to be open. The Bible says they'll be judged out of those things written in those books. Do you realize God writes down everything? That crazy dog, I'm sorry. She got to whining when the power's off. Animals even know when the power's off. She's in that cage. Woo, 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 woo. I said, Wendy, for heaven's sake, bring that stupid dog to me. So she'll stop whining. So here comes Wendy with the leash. And so I bring her in, and she brings her bag of toys in there. That dog commits to unloading them toys in my office. Teddy bears. 
squeaky bottles, you name it. She had everything and she's throwing them all over my office. So she went behind me and I thought, well, she's playing with her toys. Don't trust a dog when they're quiet. I turned around, she got in my bookcase. And there was a, I had a bunch of journals on my bottom shelf. Had these little doogies here, ribbons. She done found one and got the ribbon. Pulled the book out from in the bookcase and commenced to chewing on my journal from 1987. I turned around and I bust that dog's tail wide open. Let go of that book, you crazy hound. She went, Whoa! And I grabbed that book up. I just did save it because she was tearing it up. And I opened that book and I began reading that book. And I started remembering things I'd done for God. See, back in them days, I must have been bored. I wrote down everything I did every day. Then I realized I got that from Earl Clarkson because when we was on staff at Temple, we had to write down everything we did. And I guess I kept on doing it in my first pastorate. And so I wrote down everything I had done, where I eat, who I eat with. I mean, I, I remember things I had totally forgotten. But then it hit me. You think this is bad, boy? You wait till you stand before Jesus Christ and the books are open. And God has wrote down everything you have done. I want to hit the altar right there. Say amen. amen. I want to get right with God right there and then. Because there's things I don't want him to know and I don't want you to know. Say amen or oh me. The books are going to be open. How much of your life in those books is invested in God and how much is invested in yourself? It's a serious question. Folks, the first weapon is acknowledging God. The second weapon is to know God. The third weapon will be to put down these walls is your submission and obedience to what you know. It's one thing to know it, but it's something else to know it and do it. Say amen or oh me. I knew spaghetti was fattening but I didn't pay no attention to that knowledge that's why I'm on a diet now say amen or me but now I know I come out of Olive Garden the other day I got that pasta pass I couldn't help myself but I have to be disciplined so I go in I order my salad and I eat salad and I eat salad then I order my, my pasta and my sauce and my meat, and then I eat the meat and I leave the pasta and the sauce alone. And then I'm a little selfish. I eat two or three meatballs. I say, well, then I want some sausage. Bring me a bowl with sausage on it and I'll eat the sausage. Well, then there's all that spaghetti laying there. So the little old waitress, sweet as she is, because she wants to get in my pocket. She wants that tip. She says, would you like a box to carry that home? I said, yeah, I got two sons that eat anything. So she pours all that spaghetti I didn't eat over in them boxes. And I got up and I picked that box up. I said, dear heaven, that's heavy. I said, Wendy, pick that bag up. She picked it up. She picked it up she said, that's heavy. I said, man, why? I used to eat that every day when I got a pasta pack. She says, now you know why you're as fat as you are, don't you? <laughs> she ain't getting no more 31 bags. Say amen or oh me. But it was the truth. I picked that thing up and I realized what I was picking up in my hand, I used to carry out in my belly every day. Now it goes home and Brandon eats it. So if he comes in with a fat belly in the next few weeks, you're going to know what happens. Say amen. He took up where his daddy left off. Folks, <laughs> I want to tell you something. Sooner or later, you've got to come to the realization. You've got to not only acknowledge he's God and know what he says, but then you've got to do it. Amen? You've got to apply that knowledge. The ammunition that fills these weapons that we've told you about is readiness, willingness, and completeness of our obedience to God. The ammunition's our obedience. 
You want to bring the walls down in your life? Start obeying God. Quit disobeying God. Quit not doing what you know you ought to be doing. And stop doing what you know you ought not be doing. Obedience. That's the ammunition that brings these walls down. Acknowledge who God is. Acknowledge what he says and then do it. And folks, it'll change your life. Amen? It'll change your life. Readiness is casting down our wayward and our wicked imaginations. Willingness <clears throat> is removing every bit of pride and selfishness that hinders us from following God. We've got to be willing to follow God. And the Word of God fires that willingness. Then completeness is the captivity or controlling our thought life so we can focus on Him and not ourselves. I was on YouTube the other day and I was watching some things from back in the election of 2016. And one of those navigators, whatever you call them on TV, was talking and one asked the other one, why is it do you think President Trump won this election? And one lady spoke up, she says, I'll answer this question. She said, he was focused on one thing and one thing only, winning. He wasn't unfocused on what was going to happen after he won. He wasn't focused on what had happened before he started the collection. He was focused on one thing and one thing only. He wanted to win the election. I'm here to tell you this morning, if you're going to win this life and win this battle in life, and you're going to be the Christian you ought to be, you've got to focus on one thing. And one thing only, that's the Lord. You have to focus on obeying him. You have to make some tough decisions. And tough decisions, folks, is sometimes not doing what your family wants you to do. Sometimes being obedient to God is not doing what your boss wants you to do. And most of the time, it's not doing what you want to do. We have to learn to surrender ourselves to complete, total obedience. The only thing we think about 24 hours a day is making God happy so we can be the best servant of God we can be. Our revenge against the enemy comes when the walls fall down. And we have complete access to God. And he has complete access to us. We pray and he moves. Say amen. That's complete access. As long as you've got walls in your life, you're not going to win this thing. But when you take those walls down and you remove the disobedience and replace it with obedience and faith, the walls come down and it's easy to serve God. It's simple to serve God. You see, God through us can start, we can start to see these walls start to fall. The lost get saved. The backslidden come home to the Father. The discouraged become encouraged. It's time to break down the walls. First of all, look at Joshua chapter 6 verse 5. Joshua chapter 6 verse 5 says, And it shall come to what? That when they make a long blast with a ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall what? Shout. With a great shout. You know why some of y'all can't say amen? Your toes is hurting too bad. Some of y'all can't shout hallelujah because some pride is choking you to death right here. I said amen. Evidently some of y'all choking to death this morning. I'm worried about you. Huh? Folks, first of all, if you obey God, it shall come to pass. That may not make sense to you what God's told you to do. It may not add up in your mind what God has told you to do. Just do what he said. Can you imagine Joshua when the Lord said, march around the city of Jericho every day, once a day, for seven days. In my mortal mind, I'd have said, Lord, you've lost it. Lord, you have lost it. Moses, I mean, Joshua didn't say that, did he? Joshua got the nation of Israel. They went down to Jericho and they marched around. The Lord said on the seventh day, go seven times around 
And then, on that sudden time, blow that trumpet. Blow it loud. In my mind, I'd be saying, Lord, you've lost your marbles. But God told Joshua, didn't tell me. Joshua got the nation of Israel on the seventh day. They marched down. And they marched seven times around. And they blew the trumpet. And the walls fell flat. You see, obedience works miracles. Disobedience destroys you. Disobedience destructs your life. It deters you from God's will and it takes you to places you don't need to be doing things you ought not do that will kill you spiritually and physically, will wipe you out if you follow those ways. When the faithfulness of obedience has done its patient and consistent work in our lives, God promises the walls will fall when the trumpet sounds. I believe that trumpet sound is prayer that brings us uh, to the point of the moving of the Holy Spirit. Some folks don't even know what the moving of the Holy Spirit is in their life because they're so disobedient. You've got to weed out that disobedience in your life to find out what the moving of the Holy Spirit is. When Israel had marched around every day as they were instructed, and on the seventh day, seven times, with their work done, they sounded the long blast of the trumpet of prayer and made the horn uh, made out of the horn of a male sheep, indicating the Lamb of God. And the Spirit of God did what they could not do, simply because they did what God said to do. They did their best, and God did the rest. Oh, isn't that amazing how that works? Been preaching that for years. But we got to start doing our best. We have to obey, work, and pray until the Holy Spirit does his work. And eventually in time, the walls will fall flat to the ground. Then when we prayed to him, praised him, and preached him, and done all that we said we could do for him and for, uh, that he asked us to do, then others will miraculously find God's way because of us. Miracles he'll do for us that we could not do for ourselves. It will come to pass. Just stay obedient. Amen? Number two, B. The wall shall fall what? Down. Down. The wall shall fall down. Verse 5B. And the wall of the city shall fall f down flat. He promised them that in the beginning. Now, walls don't fall flat. They fall over. But God said, they ain't going to fall over. They're going to fall flat. Now, stop. Think, 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 think. Use your brain. If the walls fell over, how was Israel going to get in and whoop them? Do you know when they dug up the walls of Jericho, they were still perpendicular? You know why? Because just like somebody pressed the button and them walls went, vroom, that's what happened. And Israel didn't have no trouble getting in the city and whooping them Jerichoites. Come on now. Because the walls fell what? Hey, man couldn't make them fall flat. I don't know if God had a bunch of moles on the job. Some of y'all women, some of y'all still wear child in disobedience land. I don't know if he had moles or groundhogs or what working. But something was gnawing under them walls because when they blew them trumpets, them walls went. And Israel defeated Jericho. And it came to pass that the walls fell flat. You see, you may not see how God's going to do it. And you saying, God, I don't see how you're going to do it. Don't worry about how God's going to do it. Just do what he says till he does it. Amen? Just do what he says till he does it. The wall that is hindering your service, the wall that's hindering your soul from being saved, that will that is hindering your friend or loved one from coming back to God, that wall that is haunting you and trying to hinder you from the fellowship with the Lord you ought to have, they will fall flat so you can walk over them with ease and put them what? Under your feet. Amen? And you can trot over them. 1 John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our what? Faith. Who is that overcometh the world? But he that what? Believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Romans 8, 3, Nay, in all things we are more than what? conquerors of our walls through him that loved us 
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in who? It's not in you. It's not in me. It's not in the world. It's in Christ. That's who we need to get close to. But it shall come to pass. The wall shall fall flat. Now see. And the people shall ascend what? Up. Didn't say down. It said up. I want you to know something this morning. God wants your life to go upward, not downward. Oh, thank God. The walls will, uh, will, do, will go down flat and we'll rise up and we'll ascend even closer to the Lord. With the walls gone, you can get next to him. Say amen or oh man. You know when something's next to you, don't you? This morning, it's six o'clock in the morning. That stupid cat. Thank God she went to Wendy. <coughs> Wendy had to get up and go give that thing water or Wendy won't get no more sleep. I had my mask on. <sighs> I won't snore, but I was breathing good. I fell back to sleep fast. When did come back, got in the bed? I didn't even know she got back in the bed. I was gone. All of a sudden, something cold got up in the middle of my back. I said, when did you get your cold hand off my back? I ain't touching you. It's the cat. That dumb cat done got back in the bed where he'd been in that water and got them paws ice cold and put them up in my back. I knew that cat was what? Close to me. You get close to God, you ain't going to have to wonder if he's there, honey. Amen? You're going to know you done touched God and God done touched you. Say amen. You'll know that you've ascended up. You'll know that you've come close to God. Psalms 24, 3. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath what? Obedient, clean hands. And a what? Pure heart. Live a clean life, you'll have a pure heart. Who hath not lifted up his soul to vanity, that's selfishness, nor sworn deceitfully, that's lied to yourself. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. Amen? the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that what? You gotta seek him. And the way you seek him is through obeying him. And that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. That means in uh, Mays Jackson language, what do you think about them apples, amen? What do you think about that? Think about that for a minute. Think about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then verse seven. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up ye everlasting doors. And the king of who? Shall, what? When the wall's down, folks, not only can you get close to him, he can get close to you. Say amen. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in what? Battle. Every one of us are in a battle this morning. If you're saved, you're in a battle for service. If you're lost, you're in a battle for your soul. But every one of us is in a battle. And the only way you can win that battle is to draw nigh to God. And he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and ye double-minded. Listen, Tony done some things wrong Sunday night, but he said one thing right. See, if you won't hear Sunday night, you've missed out. You should have been here. That's all I'm going to tell you. You be quiet over there. Call me a drug dealer. God help him. I ain't going to never get over that. Told the whole world, preachers got the good stuff. I said, I hope they heard the whole message and not just part of it. Amen. Hope they heard it all, not just part. You can go to church. All you want to. And the devil don't care. Just don't you grow in church. 
That's the problem. We go to church, but we don't hear and we don't heed. We've got to hear and heed. We've got to listen. Amen? We've got to let it sink in. We've got to grow in the grace of God, in the Word of God. Because I don't know about you, I don't like that cat getting close to me in the middle of the night. But if my heart's hurting, or my body's hurting, I want God to get just as close to me as he can. I don't want no walls between me and God. I want the walls to fall flat. And I want to ascend up to him and I want him to ascend down to me. Amen? And I want victory. Thank God there's victory in Jesus. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed.